Okay, now in this chapter 4, we are going to talk about how you will write findings and discussion. As I had explained before, when you do your uh, thesis writing, you need to start with your chapter 1, introduction, chapter 2, review of related literature, and chapter 3, your research methodology. So all these three chapters are connected one another to construct the strength of your research. Now, supposedly that you have done your research, now it is time for you to state the findings and you discuss with your readers. Remember, your readers are scholars in your field. It doesn't have to be your lecturer. It can be scholars from other countries who might speak the same language that you write in the thesis. Okay? Now, what is the first part that you need to write in the findings and discussion? The first part is, I would uh, call it as the display of raw data. If you use quantitative research design, then your raw data might be in the form of numerical values from the questionnaire, if you use questionnaire as your research instrument. But if your qualitative research design, you apply interview, then the raw data of your research might be in the form of answers or highlighting of the key points key statement in those answers. So all these two um, research design have different raw data that you need to display in your uh, findings and discussion. <coughs> Excuse me. So in the raw data, it's still raw. What have you got from your instruments? You can categorize it into your population and sample where did you do this research and then how long, what are the participants, uh, the documents, all those things. <clears throat> now, after you display the raw data, you need to display uh, what I call it as this um, analysis. You show the way how you analyze the raw data, like a sequence. You use because you have stated in your chapter 3 technique of data analysis then you need to show that in this chapter 4 uh, how did you apply the technique of data analysis stated there this is the way how you analyze it for example if you write uh, your research about phonemic transcription, then you need to display how you analyze data related to the phonemic transcription. If you conduct a research, for example, comparison between phonemic of Minangkabau language to uh, Batavi language to English language, you, can, you need to show how this phonemic transcription moves from one language to the other. That is the way you show the analysis. After you show the analysis, you do what I call it as showing or displaying the findings. Now that is the findings. Findings are the core form of your data. After you analyze it, this is like cooking. The raw materials from the market you collected in the kitchen and then you gather with your uh, kitchen utensils and then you cook. After you cook, what did you get? What did you find? Those are the results. So that is the findings. If, let's say, you have research question in chapter 1, then you need to state that answers of your research question in that section, the findings. All right? Now, if you have hypothesis, then you need to state whether your hypothesis is accepted or rejected. It depends on your research anyway. If your research is using a hypothesis, zero hypothesis and one hypothesis, in Bahasa Indonesia we call it H0, H1, depending on the findings. After you analyze the data, then you can come to your findings. Okay, this is what I got, what I found in my research. Then, 
after you state or you display the findings then you need to discuss okay when you discuss with scholars in the field you need to understand that they might not come from the same field as yours they might be interested in to see how this uh, particular research deal with the research topic but you need to stick to the point you need to answer the research question or you need to state why the hypothesis is accepted or rejected you discuss it with a scholarly tone in a way that you need to elaborate strong reasons why such and such and such in this research is dealing with the broad conception of your field of study okay now <clears throat> after that um, you need to state it explicitly why it matters for readers to see that the findings speak for themselves so the findings stand out as you readers come to the chapter 4 to read um, what are the meanings of the findings okay now that would be so interesting if you focus on um, important majors in your research topic so the sequence from chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 chapter 4 make a very strong line in your research if I am your thesis examiner, then I'm going to see that sequence. I do not put grammar first, well, because you are my students, and I consider that, consider that you are EFL English learners, EFL learners, the same like me. So I focus more on how you connect those ideas from chapter 1, chapter 2, 3, and 4. So writing is a process, right? Now, that is chapter 4. What about chapter 5? Conclusion and suggestion? It's quite simple. If it's chapter 5, you need to uh, conclude or you wrap up what is the main thing of your research? What have you found? What are the essential points that you're going to state to your readers? Right? Now that is conclusion. You conclude the essential part of your research. You may start with the background, one or two sentences, and then you state the research method, and you also state the major thing that came out or appeared in your research, and you wrap it up. So it makes a very clean and nice way of closing your research. The suggestion part needs to be dealing with how you give your thoughts your, to your readers because your readers might be mm, not lecturers, might be um, scholars in the field or academic readers that you need to suggest. This point is uh, very important to be considered for policy makers, for example. Right? And the last one is the references. I'm going to explain to you about references in the next video.